and inspiring objects of nature, but clouds and cloud forms may have a practical value as well, for they share a study of clouds, changes in clouds as weather signs. Changes in weather and clouds are caused by the passage of the different air masses in wind systems called cyclones. This true cyclone, not a tornado, is a great counterclockwise wind system, perhaps 2,000 miles in diameter, east, about 600 miles a day. The center of the advancing world is an area of low barometric pressure, between areas of higher pressure. We have cold air east, north, and northwest of the center, with a warm sector to the south. A warm front with easterly, then southerly winds. Beyond the warm sector, a cold front where south winds shift to northerly. Where warm, moist air overrides cold air, there is precipitation, rain or snow. Now, along a line cut through the center of the cyclone, let's watch these fronts go by. Starting where the air pressure is high, let us watch for three or four days while the cyclone passes. Think of the space above this imaginary warm front line as filled with a mass of advancing warm air flowing up over a dome or ridge of heavier cold air. This warm air is moist, and as it is lifted and cools, different cloud forms develop at different altitudes. As the warm front at the Earth's surface approaches, there is rain or snow. This precipitation is generally steady and light to moderate. Fair weather follows as we enter the warm sector. Here, warm air ascends and presently, clouds begin to form. As the weather grows warmer, these clouds grow heavier. And as the cold front approaches, they become dense and threatening. Breaking in heavy rain as the cold front passes. This is the so-called squall line. These clouds tend to dissipate as the northwest winds bring in cold air. And finally, we are back where we started, in a high pressure area. So much for the phases of the typical weather cycle, which is most pronounced in winter, less so in spring and fall, and often interrupted in summer. Now let's study the cloud types that usually mark the progress of such a cycle. Starting after the passing of the cold front, we have cirrus clouds, sometimes called mare's tails. These wispy clouds of ice particles are the highest of all floating at an elevation of 25 to 30,000 feet above the Earth. The wind is from the northwest. The barometer, which tells air pressure, is high. Temperature, cool. Cirrus clouds may be followed by cirrostratus, which may merge into cirrocumulus, sometimes called mackerel sky. Next, not quite so high, we may have alto cumulus clouds. Meanwhile, the wind is northerly, temperature cool, Barometer, still high. Next, we find alto stratus clouds, not so high, generally with northeast winds, falling barometer, and steady or slowly rising temperature. As the warm front approaches, the wind swings to the east with nimbus clouds and rain or snow. As the warm front passes, the wind veers to a southerly direction. Shifts in wind indicate what part of the cyclone we are entering. Then the sky clears and we have fair and warm weather for perhaps a day with southwest winds and steady or slowly falling barometer. Scattered cumulus clouds appear at an altitude of 5,000 feet or more, gradually becoming heavier as the temperature rises. As the cold front approaches, the clouds often rise suddenly into threatening thunderheads. Mountains of cumulonimbus clouds towering to a height of possibly 30,000 feet. As the tip of the sloping cold front passes, nimbus clouds form at the base of the cumulonimbus storm cloud and heavy showers occur. These are normally brief but violent rainstorms. The temperature falls abruptly while the cold front is passing. The wind shifts to the northwest. The barometer rises and we may have a rainbow. Soon thereafter, the storm clouds give way to fractocumulus clouds, which rapidly blow away. Thus, we sector of fair and cool weather 
and the cycle is complete. So you see, 